Well, 15 weeks down, I mean, 14 weeks down, three left to go, as we're now down to week 15 of the 2018 NFL season. What an incredible season it has been, as we're getting closer to clinching a whole bunch more playoff spots and eliminations. Anyways, last week, oh boy, I went 9-7. and seven. Good damn nothing went right for me during the games. The 1pm games and the 4pm games. And especially when a lot of them were really close as shit. Uh, God, can I get another 11? I mean, um, 750 winning percentage again. It's like too much to ask for. Jeez, nothing going right for me this year when it comes to picks. And here is the playoff stands at the season end of the day. And the AFC once again still the Chiefs and Patriots with the buys. With the Ravens at the Texans and the Chargers at the Steelers. And in the NFC, it's the Saints and Rams with the buys. With the Vikings at the Bears and the Seahawks at the Cowboys. And, the, and my Super Bowl pick is the Saints beating the Chiefs. So now let's get to my Week 15 picks. So we start off with the first of three Thursday night games with the first game being tonight. And oh my god, this game is huge! Probably one of the hugest Thursday night games in a long time. As it's once again, Week 15 fine enough on Thursday night once again. The Chargers at the Chiefs with a whole bunch at the on the line just like last year. First off for the Chargers, if they win, they will be in the playoffs for the first time since 2013. And they can still get in with a loss as long as the Ravens, Dolphins, and Colts all lose. If they already got the tiebreaker on the Titans. Meanwhile, for the Chiefs, this is huge. If they win, they will clinch the um, NFC East, you know, AFC West for the third year in a row. And they will get first round bye for the first time since 2016. And to top it off... If that happens, and the Patriots and Texans lose, they will get first. I mean, home field advantage wrapped up for the first time since 1997, with two games left to go. So this week is huge, huge for the Chiefs. So they better hope everything goes right for them, because this is a huge opportunity for them, most likely. This game has a lot on the line, of course, as the Chargers actually had a part fought game against the Bengals, quite surprisingly. Meanwhile, the Chiefs, holy shit, they really got their butts kicked almost by the Ravens. They just got lucky they managed to get the win again. You better hope you don't play the Ravens again in the playoffs, because I think they have your number next time when they host when you host them again. And, of course, the um, Charger, you know, the Chiefs actually have the number on the Chargers. In fact, I don't think the Chargers have beaten the Chiefs since 2013. In fact, I think the Chargers, I mean, Chiefs have now... Nine straight, including sweeping them sent every year since. The, some, the Chiefs just have the Chargers number, even though the Chargers, I think, are more balanced, whereas the Chiefs are just so low on offense to cover for their pretty bad defense, by and large. So I think the Chiefs will get this, but don't be surprised if the Chargers somehow get it because they want to so badly catch up with the Chiefs and not only make a playoff appearance, they want to get that division title and maybe a first-round bye. And then we get to our two first night games on Saturday, starting off with the Texans at the Jets for the first time since 2012. As for the, J the Texans, if they win and the Colts and Titans lose, they will officially clinch a playoff spot and the AFC South for the first time since 2016. And if the Steelers lose to the Patriots, they can at least get a third seed all, at least the third seed all wrapped up and maybe try and get the second seed, if not go for home field advantage possibly. As they lost a hard-fought game against the Colts, of course, that losing streak was probably going to have to come to an end very soon. I still can't believe they were able to win 9 in a row after starting off 0-3. Meanwhile, the Jets actually made the comeback against the Bills. Holy crap, if they only they could have kept that, prevented the comeback against the Titans. And, and at 5-8, and eight, they would have looked in a lot better situation. Although, of course, they are eliminated from the playoffs. The Texans are trying to get in this one. As they're both, I mean, this game actually could be probably really close defensively. You can't underestimate the Jets. They've been all over the place this year. And, of course, now that the Texans finally um, ended their um, nine-game losing, I mean, winning streak, It's quite. I'm quite curious to see how they're going to respond and play out the rest of the season. Are they going to make the playoffs or are they going to crap the bed and lose all the rest of the games and maybe just barely sneak in as a wild card? I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. I picked the Texans for this one, but don't be surprised here if the Jets get it. Then we get to the next Thursday night game after that, as it's the Browns at the Broncos for the first time since 2012, as this is like playoff elimination scenario for the Browns. If they lose, they can no longer clinch the um, AFC's North, but if they lose, and if either the, any of the either Dolphins, Ravens, Colts, or Titans win, if any one of them wins, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs and continue in that league-long drought. Meanwhile, the Broncos, if they lose, 
And because the Ravens have the tiebreaker on them, I know that. So if they lose and the Ravens win, they most likely would be eliminated from the playoffs. But who knows? They still got the I mean, um, Dolphins, Colts, and Titans to deal with. So maybe they could um, still sneak in at 8 day if they all tied up or somehow. Anyways, this will probably be a defensive struggle, which is going to be awesome for me. This game will be interesting as hell, of course, as the Browns beat the Panthers when everyone thought, oh, tell me no, no, they're not going to beat the Panthers. Whoopsie daisies. Once again, they beat the Panthers when they host them like they usually do. And the Broncos. Oh my god, you laid an absolute egg at the 49ers after you won three in a row. and looked like you were finally turning around maybe challenge for a wildcard team. You blew it right there. However, I think the Broncos will get this one, but I won't be surprised here if the Browns somehow get it. Would be nice if I can get a game where it's like I feel confident that the, a team will certainly win. And then we get to Sunday action, starting off with the Cardinals at the Falcons for the first time since 2016. As for the Falcons, if they lose or the um, Vikings win, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs. And once again, we'll have to go another year waiting to see if a team will host the Super Bowl. Anyways, the Cardinals, they... What was that game they most recently played? Fuck, I can't even remember what they played last time out. But anyways, of course, the Falcons... Got, I mean, I'm blue it against the Packers. Why am I not surprised by and large? As, of course, I think the Falcons will get this. At least they got some sort of offensive firepower, whereas the Cardinals got nothing. And the Falcons actually have a very good history when they host the Cardinals. But, of course, you can't underestimate the Cardinals here. They've been all over the place, too, especially when they beat the Packers on the road just a two weeks ago. Also, I just finally remembered it was the Lions that they lost to, which I'm going to get to in a bit. And then we get to our first hour conference showdown of the week, as it's the Buccaneers at the Ravens for the first time since 2010. As for the Buccaneers, if they lose and the Vikings win, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs. And once again, another losing season. And they, um, shit. Oh, they blew it against the Buccaneers, I mean the Saints. You had a 14 free lead, like, late into the fourth quarter, and then you let the Saints score, like, 22 unanswered points. What the hell? How'd that happen? Jesus Christ, you should have owned their ass by that point. You were really shutting them down good, and you just let them get away with it. Anyways, the Ravens, I was actually very impressed with how well they played against the Chiefs last week. I saw so confident that I think if they play them again, I think they actually could win it this time around. And they really put a number on um, Patrick Mahomes. And this will probably be another defensive struggle. Would be nice if Lamar Jackson could actually get over 50% completions for once and not fumble the ball. So that's, that nigga can run like crazy, at least, unlike Flacco. I think the Ravens will get this one, but you can't underestimate the Buccaneers either. They've been all over the place this year, especially offensively. They can put up like 40 points one week and then shit the bed the other week. So don't underestimate them, Ravens. You need to start winning out to have any shot making the playoffs and possibly getting um winning the a AFC North. And then it's the Lions at the Bills for the first time since 2010. And for the Lions, if they lose and if the Vikings win, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs. <coughs> yeah, the Vikings have a lot of um, playoff eliminations they'll do if they win. We'll get to that throughout the video. <laughs> and of course, trying to avoid their first losing season since 2015. As they beat the Cardinals, surprisingly, I thought, I'm thought i surprised they actually got the victory because usually they struggle very badly when they visit the Cardinals. Meanwhile, the Bills, what the hell were you doing blowing it against the Jets at home? You were dominating throughout the entire game until you let them get away with it in a fourth quarter comeback. Oh my god. I normally pick the Bills for this game, but the way they're playing right now, close games, I think the Lions actually will get it right now. At least the Lions got something. The Bills, other than their defense playing good at home, really got nothing, and I still think they're overall one of the worst teams in the league. But I won't be surprised either if the Bills somehow get it. And then it's the Packers at the Bears. As the Packers, if they lose and the Vikings win, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs. And the Bears, if they win or the Vikings lose, they will clinch their first playoff appearance and the NFC... Um, South, I mean, NFC North for the first time since 2010, which is tied with the Jets for, I think, the third longest playoff drought in the league. So that will be nice to finally end that once and for all. As they beat the Rams in defensive slugfest. Oh, God, that was awesome last Sunday night. All those turnovers. They shut down one of the league's best offenses. As I always like to say, defense wins championships. That was awesome. And the Packers finally ended their three-game I mean, losing streak. As they beat the Falcons. I think the Bears will get this one. Since the Packers are still in free for all. But of course, Pack Bears, you can't underestimate the Packers. After all, they've kicked your ass 
for, for like the last like decade plus. They own your ass, especially when you they visit you. So don't underestimate them. I'm sure the Packers, even though they're very likely out of the playoffs still, although they still have a chance, they're going to fight very hard and make it a hell for you to try and win that NFC North title. And then it's the Raiders at the Bengals for the first time since 2012. As the Bengals, if they lose, they can no longer clinch the AFC North. But if they lose, and just like the Browns, if the Dolphins, Ravens, Colts, or Titans, if any of them win, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs. And of course, once again, third year in a row of a losing record, you got to wonder if finally Marvin Lewis will get fired for once and go somewhere else. Anyways, of course, the Raiders beat the Steelers. I told you all. I told you all. I told you all. They were going to beat the Steelers. The Steelers always struggle when they visit the Raiders. Meanwhile, the Bengals actually put up a hard-fought game against the Chargers. I was quite impressed, but they still couldn't win it in the end. Of course, no A.J. Green. Well, actually, who knows? A.J. Green might still be back. And, of course, no Andy Dalton. Nothing's going right for them. So, you got to think maybe the Raiders actually could pull it off on the road. At least the Raiders got... They are cars, some sort of offense. The Bengals really got nothing offensively. But I think the Bengals will still get, at least I think they're more of an average team, whereas the Raiders are just one of the, playing pretty bad right now this year. And then we get to a big outer conference showdown, as it's the Cowboys at the Colts for the first time since 2010. I'm sure the Cowboys hope they can pull up an impressive performance like they did last time they visited them. And of course, for the Cowboys, if they win and the Redskins and Eagles lose, they will clinch a playoff spot and the NFC East for the first time since 2016 as they keep their winning streak going. They've now won five in a row right now. Up there is one of the best in the league. Meanwhile, the Colts are trying to get their first non-losing season since 2016. As this game is going to go either one of two ways. Either offensive shootout, which that's a lot to ask, or defensive slugfest too. And of course, the Colts also... Put the finally ended the Texans winning streak. The Cowboys beat the Eagles. Part of, I don't know what it is. What is it with defensive struggles lately that all of a sudden they become offensive shootouts the final like quarter? I never get that. It's really weird. <laughs> this game will be interesting as hell. Sucks I won't be able to see it. I think the Colts will be able to get it and finally end the Cowboys winning streak. And then it's the Redskins at the Jaguars for the first time since 2010. And of course. Jaguars are already eliminated. Redskins are on the verge of being eliminated, but they're still not quite there yet. As the Redskins, I knew I should have picked the Giants because they had so much momentum going in their side. But something just told me that the Redskins still might be able to pull it off. <laughs> so much for that. They made me look like an idiot. And the Jaguars, of course, got their asses destroyed by the Titans on Thursday night. What else is new? You can't ever beat the Titans for some reason. I think the Jaguars will get this because at least they got defense. The Redskins... Don't really are inconsistent and they have no offense and they're on the road. Even though they did beat the Jaguars last time they visited them in a defensive struggle, but I'm picking the t Jaguars for this. And then it's the Dolphins at the Vikings for the first time since 2010, as this is playoff implications on the line. As the Dolphins trying to get their first non-losing season since 2016, and the Vikings, of course, like I mentioned, if they win, they will knock a whole bunch of teams out of the playoffs. I've mentioned I think almost all of them, although I think there's still one more coming up. So, Vikings win, they will knock a whole bunch of teams out of the playoffs thanks to that tie. As these games, every time these two meet, like the last three times, 2000, 2002, and 2010 in Minnesota, that's always a defensive struggle, which I think it's going to be. As the Dolphins pull off that miracle comeback against the Patriots, like I told you all that the Dolphins would get the victory there. And, of course, the Vikings laid an egg against the Seahawks on Monday night. No surprise, fired their offensive coordinator, so... Kind of interesting to see what they're going to do down the final stretch. I think the Vikings will get this, but I most certainly won't be surprised here if the Dolphins get it because they're pulling off, I mean, pulling rabbits out of their hats each week, whereas the Vikings are continuing to struggle, especially since now they lost two in a row. And then it's the Titans at the Giants for the first time since 2010. Giants hope to avoid that terrible debacle last time in 2010. As the Giants, if they lose and the Vikings win, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs. As the Titans destroyed the Jaguars on Thursday night. And how about that too? Like over at Jeff over at Schlag that keeps shitting on the Giants. Guess what? They were 1-7. Now they've been gone four and one since. They're a lot better than everyone's um, giving them credit for. Especially when they destroyed the Redskins last Sunday. I'm actually picking the Giants for this one because they are on a roll right now. They're playing really good. And the Titans, of course, have been inconsistent and all over the place. But I won't be surprised here if the Titans somehow get it themselves. 
And then we finally get to the two 4 p.m. games finally. Holy shit. As it's the Seahawks at the 49ers. And if the Seahawks win and the Reds... Actually, Seahawks, I mean the Redskins, Eagles... Uh, Panthers. Well, actually, no, they got the tiebreaker of the Panthers. So if the Eagles and Redskins all lose, the Seahawks could clinch a playoff spot for the first time since 2016. I bet none of you thought the Seahawks are going to be making the playoffs this year, and holy shit, they're on the verge of just making it. As, of course, they destroyed the Vikings on Monday night. That was a defensive struggle, although I still don't get how they got that Vikings got that touchdown when Kirk Cousins passed the line of scrimmage. And, of course, the 49ers actually beat the Broncos in pretty convincing fashion. At least they're still being somewhat competitive. This game, of course, you would think could be pretty close. Especially, as it has been pretty close the last couple years when they visit the um, 49ers. But, of course, the Seahawks have beaten... The 49ers have not beaten the Seahawks since 2013. So, that's nine losses in a row they've gotten swept by, too. I think the Seahawks will get this one, but don't underestimate the 49ers here. Even when they're struggling, they're still putting up a hard-fought fight. And then we get to a big out, I mean, AFC showdown as the Patriots are at the Steelers for the third year in a row. For the Patriots, if they win and the Jag um, Dolphins lose, they will clinch a playoff spot in the AFC East for like the 10th year in a row. And of course, if they do win, they will officially at least secure the third seed in the playoffs. They'll still try and fight the Texans and the Chiefs for the two seeds. As, a st as they um, lost that hard-fought game against the Dolphins last week on that comeback. That's why you can't underestimate the Dolphins, I tell you, every year when you go down there. And, of course, the Steelers. Three in a row losses. I'm not surprised you lost to the um, Raiders whatsoever, like I'm sure everyone else is. God damn. How? <laughs> oh, my God. It is back to the Steelers at the beginning of the year, struggling like crazy. As they're blowing their entire opportunity... They can no longer get home field advantage. Now they're on the verge of blowing their opportunity to get the second or third seed. They might be stuck as the fourth seed in the playoffs. And, of course, they might possibly blow their um chances to win the, I mean, lead the AFC North as the Ravens are making a giant surge to catch up to them. I think still the Steelers will get this win because they always play good against the Patriots, especially as long as Big Ben plays. But I won't be surprised either if the Patriots get seeing how badly the Steelers have been struggling. And then we get to Sunday night, a matchup we thought was going to be sick, but unfortunately ended up being really disappointing, as it's the Eagles at the Rams for the second year in a row, as the Rams, if they beat the Eagles and the Bears lose, they will officially clinch first round bye for the first time since 2003, as this is a rematch from last year when both of them were fighting hard for a um, playoff spot at that point, remember? And, of course, that was the game Carson Wentz went down with his injury. And speaking of Wentz, if you didn't hear, he has a back injury. So, he's very unlikely to not only not play on Sunday, but he might miss the rest of the season. Oh, boy. You got to wonder, is this going to be a problem for the rest of his career? He can't stay healthy. As nothing is really going right for the Eagles whatsoever. They blew it against the Cowboys last week in that defensive struggle. That turned an offensive shootout in the fourth quarter in overtime. The Rams got their asses kicked by an actual good defense in the Bears. That's why I always say defense wins champion. G defense always wins, by and large. I think the Rams actually will get this, especially since Carson Wentz is not playing, and the Eagles are just complete and utter free-for-all. And then we get to Monday night. It looks lopsided, but still has significant playoff implications, as it's the Saints at the Panthers. As the Saints, if they win and the Bears lose to be safe, they will clinch first-round bye for the first time since 2009. And for the Panthers, they st actually, if the Panthers lose, they still be in a shot for a playoff implicate, I mean, playoffs over a wild card. As the Saints made the comeback against the Buccaneers, and of course, the Panthers lost fucking five in a row now. Holy shit, like, half, I mean, during the half, first half of the season, we thought, oh my god, this is going to be sick. This could possibly be not only the NFC South on the line, but possibly first round bye on the line, possibly, but nope. Saint, I mean, the Panthers laid an egg, lost five in a row now on the verge of missing the playoffs as they're trying to fight hard to get that one wild card spot as they can possibly might lose it to the Seahawks if they win their game against the 49ers. And, of course, as we saw last year, the Saints absolutely destroyed the Panthers. And, in fact, the Saints actually do... No, actually, it's even between the two the last bunch of years when they played each other. But, of course... The Saints are much better than last year. The Panthers are in complete utter free-for-all. And we saw what happened when they played the Saints last year, especially when they hosted them when they got blown out. I think the Saints will easily get this unless the Panthers finally stop laying an egg for once and actually play to win the game. 
So those are my picks for week 15. I can't wait for Chargers at Chiefs tonight. That is going to be huge. And of course, at the end of the week, we could possibly have one, two, three, four, five, six, six, um, like nine teams in the playoffs with just a few weeks remaining. Holy shit, these last few weeks are going to be sick. So see you guys then for week 16 picks. And of course, as I'm checking out the schedule right now, because I think the rest of the games... Yeah, next week is going to be on Saturday afternoon. So my um, next my week 16 picks will be on Friday instead of Thursday. And of course, as always, my week 17 picks will be on Saturday instead. So tune in for then on Friday for my week 16 picks and then on Saturday from um, my week 17 picks when that time.